Remember, every rocker has a soft side. It's almost embarrassing to put it on the list, but yes, it is catchy as shit. The band name sucks. Hair metal is, is an attitude, it's a time period. Life can bring you up and life can bring you down. That should have destroyed the charts. This is a song that goes so much deeper into the soul, and I'm gonna fucking forget. You hear hair metal and you hear 1993, and you just know that this album got fucked. And if you can trust the almighty Wikipedia. Okay, the next bit. Fuck. Welcome to episode number 11 from the Hair Metal Guru. My name is Anthony, and they call me the Guru. Before we get into this next episode, I just wanted to say thank you for the huge amount of support this channel has gotten. In just being in existence for two months, we're at 444 followers, and we've had some videos that have reached some really great numbers. Um, first of all, the video that I put out last week on 10 underrated hair metal bands has gotten 1,500 views, which is, is awesome. Thank you so much. And the video that I put out about a month ago about my story and my journey with Janie Lane of Warrant is at 14,000 views. Now, when I started this channel two months ago, I never expected anything that I put online to get any kind of traction like that. So, to all of my followers and all the people that have liked my videos, subscribed, or commented, I just want you to know that I really appreciate your support and your love for this music that so many of us still care about, that it still matters, uh, that you're going to tune in and, and listen to me talk about these bands uh, really means a lot. So thank you. Look, I came here to do two things, chew bubblegum and talk hair metal. And it looks like I'm almost out of bubblegum. For episode number 11, we are going to do something similar to what we did on our last episode. And that is, we are going to talk about 10 more hair metal bands that could have and should have, but didn't. Like I said before, the reason I started this channel is there are so many bands that I love that wrote songs that just have impacted me and stayed with me for decades. And, and I want to share with other people how much these bands mean to me. And, you know, if these bands are still out doing it, hey, I encourage you to support them. Um, but even if they're not, hey, go discover these bands and go discover these songs for yourself. Maybe you'll find a band or even a song that means something to you. And if that happens, then this video would be a success for me. So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to talk about 10 hair metal bands from the past that put out at least one album that I love. I'm going to give at least a maybe a brief history on each band. Now, I'm going to let you know that some of these bands there is not a lot of information about. Now, you know, the Heavyweights, the Poisons, the Cinderellas, the Warrants, I can tell you everything about those bands all of the members, when they formed, because all of that information is online. So some bands that you're going to hear about today, like Juliet and, and Blue Tears, there I found some information, but I'm not going to be able to give you a deep dive into their history, but I'll give you what I can, and then with each album that I talk about, I'm going to tell you what songs they have that I would rate an 8 or higher. Now, when I say an 8 or higher... I mean songs that I think could have been on the radio back in the day. These are songs that I still actively love to listen to. So, in addition to songs that are an eight or, an eight or higher, I will try to tell you um, what rock songs rate that high. And then I'm going to tell you about the ballads. Because remember, every rocker has a soft side. So, the first band we're going to start off with is Juliet. Now... I'm just going to add this as a as a, a postscript. If I give any wrong information and, and you know the correct stuff, hey, tell me in the comments. You know, let, let me know. Let me know if, if there's something that I need to fix 
or just something that, that you can correct me on. So Juliet, formed in 1985, led by singer Kenny McGee. And if I understand right, they moved from Florida to Los Angeles in 1988 in search for that ever elusive record deal. Now, the band finally released their debut album and the album we're going to be talking about, their self-titled album, in 1990. And this thing, it's, it's very pop, rock, pop metal. And like I've said this before, when I say pop metal in these terms, it's a compliment. So let's talk about what songs from Juliet's self-titled debut you need to know about. First is Eight Lives Gone. What an unbelievable opening track and the best chorus on the album. This thing will not leave your brain. Then you gotta know, Stay the Night, Help is on the Way, Something You Should Know, which is a great pop rock song. Now the ballads on this album are No More Tears, which I really like. And then there's two others, Chip Away and Love Can Change You, which I'll be honest, I don't... Drew, Kenny McGee has a he's a great voice for ballads. I don't think they have the best ballads on this album. Uh, like I said, No More Tears is good. To me, the other two don't stand up very well. But what Juliet does is great pop rock, pop metal. Super catchy, exploding choruses, great driving, guitar intros, and Kenny McGee's fantastic, gritty vocals. That's where Juliet excels. Now, Juliet did put out another album later on. I'll add a picture to the video. Again, this is a band that, that there isn't, at least for me, a ton of information about. This is a band that I did not discover until later years, but it's a travesty that some of these songs didn't make it on the radio. Juliet. Their stuff is, I think their debut album uh, has been re-released, so you may be able to find it online, but the album's all over YouTube. Go check it out. Great album. Now, the next band we're going to talk about is a band called Blue Tears. Now, this is another band that I, I didn't know anything about back in the day. It's probably been in the last five years that somebody suggested a song um called Rockin' with the Radio. And Rockin' with the Radio is, is such a top-notch pop rock song, but I'll get into the songs later. So that song um, was my initial introduction to Blue Tears. I don't know a lot about this band. I know they were led by a guy named Greg Fulkerson, who is their singer and apparently wrote most of the songs. Now I did try to do a little bit of research on the band, and I found out that Greg Fulkerson did pass away in 2009, so rest in peace. But the guy put out a phenomenal album in 1990, and I'm talking about the Blue Tears self-titled album. So let's get into the songs. What do you need to know from Blue Tears? Well, first of all, Rockin' With The Radio is 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 pop metal Bon Jovi. And I mean that in a good way. This is a song that would fit on Bon Jovi's Slippery When Wet album. And I love that album. You need to know Crush. And then Blue Tears. Blue Tears might be considered a ballad. Take This Heart. Innocent Kiss, which is, is so sticky, 80s sweet. It's almost embarrassing to put it on the list, but yes, it is catchy as shit. And the last rock song you need to know is Thunder in the Night. Now, there are two ballads that are phenomenal on this album. First, True Romance, which, yes, you know, like the title, it's like, okay, another love song ballad, but Blue Tears does them with class and style. This is a great ballad. But the best ballad on the album is a song called Halfway to Heaven. And that chorus will just find a way to give you goosebumps, even just thinking about it. Um, 
gets me just inspired. So there's some rock songs. There's a couple ballads you need to know. Blue Tears, a band that got very little publicity, but I don't know why the album deserves so much better. So go check it out. Listen to it on YouTube. Find it on e eBay, the Blue Tears self-titled album. Now, the, the next band that we're going to talk about is, is it's a band that I, all, I like, I almost think they, they're a little bit too well known. And that band is Taikido. And there's a couple bands that are going to be in this episode that I think fall into the same, the, the same category. Bands that, you know, they were in a lot of the rock magazines. They, they did have some songs that got some fairly steady uh, MTV play. But I don't think these albums, um, they did not go gold. So that is one thing that would, that would preclude me from ever putting an album on one of these videos is if it went gold or if they had a major hit. So I'll give you an example. Somebody suggested Steelheart. Now, I don't think... And I could be wrong. I don't think the Steelheart debut went gold. But it had a massive hit with that ballad, I'll Never Let You Go. So, back to Taikido. They did have some sales. They did have some, some radio play. But man, this band still had songs that could have, in my opinion, blown up on radio and MTV. So let's get into a little bit about the band and their history. So Taikido was, was formed in 1987, if you can trust the almighty Wikipedia. And they were they were led by Danny Vaughn was their lead singer. Now Danny Vaughn had already had some previous history with big bands. He had fronted the band Wasted with Pete Way and actually put out, uh, at least I know of one really great album called Save Your Prayers, a very good pop rock pop metal album. Now you'll you'll know when when you see this this band's look. They were not an LA hair metal band. So I'll throw out this qualifier. Not all of these bands are, you know, exactly hair metal. They didn't all do the puffed up look, but hey, hair metal is is an attitude, it's a time period and it's a general sound. So Taikido forms in 1987. They released their debut album in, and I'm going to fucking forget, they released they de their debut album, Don't Come Easy, in 1991. And, and this is probably a similar story, but a little bit too late to the party. 1991, that's the same year Nirvana's Nevermind came out. Now, there were big rock albums in 1991. Skid Row's Slave to the Grind came out that year, but... 1991, the scene was starting to die. However, it shouldn't have died on Taikido's Don't Come Easy album. This album is a pop rock, almost AOR. When I think AOR, I think of pop metal, pop rock. It's an AOR masterpiece. So let's get into the songs on Don't Come Easy that you need to know. Now the first song and First video, the opening track off Don't Come Easy is a song called Forever Young. And this is such a great, it's it's actually, you know, I think Taikido's kind of pop rock, but it's got a really heavy driving guitar riff that opens up this song. But Danny Vaughn has some phenomenal, almost, I, almost Steve Perry like a very clean vocals. There isn't any grit, but very powerful. And this song, this song has such a catchy chorus. Um, you know, like I said, it did get it did get a video, it did get some MTV play. Deserves so much better. Now the next rock song you need to know is "Burning Down Inside," and it almost starts off like a ballad, but it's more of a mid-tempo rock song. Um, super chorus. Uh, you know, has that has that slow melodic intro, but then picks up. Great song. Then you need to know Seasons and Lay Your Body Down. Nothing But Love, which I'll admit the lyrics are kind of cheesy, but uh, the music to it is great. And then the last rock song you need to know is the final song called Sail Away. Now, as far as ballads go, um, 
it's it's almost even difficult for me to describe how much I love the song Standing Alone. Um, I know, and I've said this in past videos, but there will come a point where I do a, a video about my favorite ballads of the hair metal genre and have no doubt that the song Standing Alone by Taikido will be on that video. This is not a, a love, a, I love you, I miss you ballad. This is a song that goes so much deeper into the soul. The lyrics are, are heartbreaking. And I'm going to give you a sample of the lyrics. Here's how Standing Alone starts. Staring out the window like I'm waiting for a change. As if I'd stare long enough, I'd see it when it came. I used the book of numbers by the silent telephone. I called up everyone I found, but I didn't talk to no one. And the rain comes down as if it's trying to wash me away. And there ain't no romantic movie lines like they say. Man, that just hits me right here. And this song is, is so catchy. I just, it, it, why it didn't get a, a video and, and blow up all over MTV and radio is beyond me. In fact, on their second album, which didn't come out until 1994, uh, called Strength in Numbers, they actually re-released um, Standing Alone with the hopes that maybe it would catch on. Um, and, and I see why they did it. Um, the song, like I said, it, man, it deserves so much better. One of my favorite ballads of the genre. So, uh, Don't Come Easy, great pop rock album. Um, super catchy, AOR-ish rock. Phenomenal ballad. Go check it out. They have put out albums since then. Strength in Numbers, I do have. It's a it's a great album. Um, now, the albums that they put out after that, and I'll put the pictures of the album covers in the video, I don't have as much history with, but support this band. Um, I know Danny Vaughn has done a bunch of solo stuff. Uh, so, you know, check them out. Go support the band, um, but don't come easy. Great album. Now, the next album we're going to talk about, man, uh, I, I love this album, is, is Leather Boys with Electric Toys by Pretty Boy Floyd. Now, this is another band that kind of like Taikido. I was borderline on, on including them in, in this video because their album, their that debut album did get a lot of publicity. There was a lot of ads for it in magazines. It got two music videos. Um, timing, timing, and, and maybe their image being so over the top when a lot of hair metal bands were starting to tone it down. Now, I understand why they kept this outrageous image, and you'll see it from the pictures. Hey, try something different. Different. Everybody else is toning it down. Fuck that. We're going to blow it up, you know? And, and so I thought maybe it had a chance to work. So, alas, the album had some minor hits, but didn't didn't get the attention it deserved. But this is a hair metal masterpiece. Let's talk about the songs on Leather Boys with Electric Toys. Okay, the rock songs that you need to know. Leather Boys with Electric Toys, the album opener. Rock and Roll is Gonna Set the Night on Fire, the first single. Super catchy. You know, it, that's a hair metal anthem, as far as I'm concerned. Toast of the Town, which is a Motley Crue cover. Rock and Roll Outlaws. And ballads that you need to know. Now, I think Wild Angels is, is a ballad. Some It might be considered more mid-tempo. It's a great ballad. Um, Only the Young is probably more of a mid-tempo, but it's it's super emotional, great song. And then there's I Wanna Be With You, which is was actually got a video, was released as a single, got some airplay. Now, in my opinion, Pretty Boy Floyd was trying to mix hair metal with almost 50s or 60s doo-wop rock. Um, 
I want to be with you has lyrics that would fit onto a, a, an Elvis or an early Beatles song, but it worked. And this album, uh, is chock full of hair metal anthems, great ballads, and it disappeared without a trace and it shouldn't have. So pretty boy Floyd has put out more albums, but re really, I mean, I hate to say it, Leather Boys with Electric Toys is the only one that has really struck a nerve. I think they put out some stuff that, you know, wouldn't be considered even like, like, I think they put out one real brand new album and what the fuck is it called? They put out an album a few years ago called Public Enemies. I bought the CD. I'll be honest, I don't think it's really grabbed me. Perhaps I need to go give it another listen. Go visit Leather Boys with Electric Toys, one of the best albums of this genre. Okay, the next band and album we're gonna get into is a band called Rocks Gang, who released an album called Things You've Never Done Before in 1988. Now, Rocks Gang were from Florida, but they had a serious glam look. But this album, in, in, it was different. It had it had some great storytelling in some of the songs. It, it, to me, it just it wasn't the epitome. There there were some songs that really fit into the hair metal circles. There was some serious sex stuff, but they also had some songs that went a little bit deeper. And I thought that might have helped separate them from the pack when their album came out. Obviously, you know it didn't happen. The album didn't blow up, but. Uh, this album should have. They did have some tragedy in their past. Uh, their their first lead guitar player, Eric Carroll, died um, in the early formation of the band. You know, I think as they were getting ready to record that debut album, so they bring in another. The history is, is littered with, with some substance abuse issues. You'll go see. Um, there's some videos, interviews on YouTube where they talk about... Uh, you know, members being in and out of rehab, but they held it together long enough to put out this a fantastic debut album. So let's talk about the songs that you need to know from Rock's Gang. The first two songs were both released as singles and videos. Scratch My Back, which is kind of a sex rocker, but it is super catchy. I love that song. No Easy Way Out. That's a song that kind of strayed away from the typical uh, hair mellow rock song. Then the other rock song that I'll suggest is Fastest Gun in Town. Now, there are two ballads on this album that are phenomenal, and they are not the typical hair metal ballad. The first one is Ball and Chain, and it's got almost this kind of epic medieval kind of intro and there's these gang vocals in the chorus that just make it just grip me right here phenomenal song ball and chain and then there's another ballad called red rose and red rose seems to be about somebody who's on their deathbed and they're asking this person that they love to leave a red rose on their grave again you know, just not the, oh, babe, I love you and I miss you. And there's there's nothing wrong with those ballads. I love a lot of those ballads. But it was nice to see bands that were willing to step outside what the ordinary hair metal band was putting out and try something different. Now, it didn't work for Rock's Gang. This album really, you know, I think it, I think it probably sold, it might have sold a couple hundred thousand copies, but not enough to keep them, you know, surviving the grunge movement. They did put out another album in the mid 90s and then and then Kevin Steele, the leader of the band, changed it from Rock Gang to I think it's called Mojo Gurus. They put out some albums, but if you want to start somewhere with Rock Gang, start off with things you've never done before. It's a 10. Okay, the next album we're going to talk about, and the next band is a band called Every Mother's Nightmare. And Every Mother's Nightmare is, is kind of original because they're almost like a southern metal band. If, like if you combine hair metal with Leonard Skinner, you might get Every Mother's Nightmare. Now, 
I'm assuming that most people think I'm going to talk about their debut album. And that's a great album. It was put out, now I'm going to forget what fucking year it is. Now, their debut album, the self-titled release, was put out in 1990. And there's some great songs on that. And I'll just throw out a couple names. Walls Come Down was a great rock song. They put out a really cool cover of, of country singer Charlie Daniels. Um, the fuck is that called? Long-Haired Country Boy. And there was a phenomenal ballad called Love Can Make You Blind. However, today I'm going to talk about their 1993 album called Wake Up Screaming. Now, you hear hair metal and you hear 1993 and you just know that this album got fucked. There were so many phenomenal albums put out from 1992 to 1994. And some of my favorites, Warren's Dog Eat Dog, Motley Crue's 1994 album with John Karabi, Winger's Pull, Lillian Axe's Psycho Schizophrenia, and Every Mother's Nightmare Wake Up Screaming. So what songs do you need to know from Wake Up Screaming? Rock songs. House, House of Pain. Now, as I start reading these titles, I'm reminded this album is darker. You know, it falls in line with Warren's Dog Eat Dog. It wasn't a huge party record. But, you know, so yes, were, were these bands like, like uh, Every Mother's Nightmare on this album? trying to jump a little bit on the on the on the the grunge bandwagon yes but they did a great job of combining the best parts of hair metal with the best parts of grunge so we got house of pain closet down the hall slip and fall good die young breakdown and probably the heaviest song on the album the the finale Cry in Shame. Now, there are a couple great ballads on this on this album, and they are kind of dark. I Hate Myself, dark ballad, but hey, sometimes, you know, life can bring you up and life can bring you down. So, so I have nothing against, you know, like dark and sad ballads, all right? So I Hate Myself, Already Gone, and If I Had My Way, oh, and one more, I Needed You. So four songs that might technically be considered ballads, but this album is, is full of, of great and gritty and dark rock songs, some great rock ballads. Every Mother's Nightmare uh, is still still continuing, and, and I know that Rick Rule, their singer, they are, they are still putting out albums. They do still play occasional shows. I, I have listened to some of their recent albums. There's some stuff that I really do like. So I, at first, I would say you need to go listen to that debut album. You need to check out Wake Up Screaming. It came out in 90, 1993, so obviously it had no chance, but I'm telling you, it's worth a listen. Okay, the next band we're going to talk about is a band that is is still so many people in in I don't know if you want to call it underground hair metal circles. You know, um, I'll, I'll plug my, my Twitter channel, at Hair Metal Guru. So there's a bunch of us that talk about and just love this genre. And one of the albums that so many people consider to be so underrated and got so screwed by the music business is Bane and their 1989 debut album, no respect and that title is so appropriate because this album did not get the respect it deserved it should have blown up now vane was led by a guy named davy vane and i think they started off in san francisco though you know san francisco and la they, they kind of seem like they get combined they played tons of shows in la on the sunset strip but davy vane was their lead singer and creative force um you know, the band put out many, many albums uh, following No Respect. I have some of them. I enjoy some of them. But I don't think that anything is quite matched up with the, with the awesomeness of that No Respect album. So let's get into the songs that you need to know. 
First, you need to know the song Beat the Bullet, which was released as a single awesome, awesome rock song. You need to know who's watching you. Ace's phenomenal guitar intro. No Respect, which has this cool, like, like almost spoken, quiet intro, then explodes. Laws Against Love. Down for the Third Time. And Without You. Now, I, I don't know. There's not really an, a ballad on this album. Maybe, uh, maybe a thousand degrees. Um... Anyway, you know, Davey's got, he does it. It's almost this kind of high-pitched, but really cool vocals. There's not a lot of grit. It's very clean, but super original. When you hear Davey Vane sing, you know exactly what band you're listening to. So, like I said, they put out many albums post No Respect. But No Respect is the first place you start with this band. So, obviously, you know, go... Go check out, they're all on YouTube. See what you think of the other albums. Start with No Respect. It's a band that, in an album that should have blown up, at least in hair metal circles. And in underground hair metal circles, it is as big as they come for albums that never got some huge success. Okay, the next band we're gonna talk about is Cats in Boots. You know, just saying that name, I'm like, that, that band name sucks. Cats in Boots. So I don't know who who decided that had to be the band name, but in my opinion, that name screws over a really great band and a really great album in Kicked and Clawed. Now, Cats and Boots, led by their, their singer, Joel Ellis, some of the most phenomenal and powerful and high, yet also gritty vocals. I It's easy to easy for me to say that Joel, Joel Ellis is one of the best and most original vocalists of this genre. Now I know that part they, they got big in Japan because at least their lead guitar player uh, comes from comes from Japan so they were huge over there but their debut album Kicked and Clawed which came out in 1989 should have blown up in America. Um, I will say this I you, you know in, in that day, in, in, in those days, you needed a great ballad to to blow up, or at least you know a, a great rock song followed by a great ballad. Um, I don't know that Kit, Cats and Boots really had a great ballad. I think there there is a ballad on the album, but nothing that was going to stand with you. But they had some rock songs that should have destroyed the charts. So let's get into the songs that you need to know on Kicked and Clawed. So, okay, I mentioned that I don't think they really have a ballad. There kind of is a ballad called Every Sunrise. I don't think it's all that great. But you need to know Shotgun Sally. You need to know Her Monkey. And you absolutely need to know Long, Long Way From Home. So if you start anywhere, start with those three songs. Those three songs are worth the purchase of the album alone. Now, I'll also throw out Coast to Coast is a great song. Bad Boys Are Back is a great song. And Judas Kiss, I also very like. Start with those first three. If you don't like those, you are not going to like this album. Now, Joel Ellis did start another band that that released an album, I think it came out in 1992, called Heavy Bones. Frankie Benali from Quiet Riot was on drums. I really like that album. That album is super popular in underground hair metal circles. So I also recommend Heavy Bones. But check out Cats and Boots, Kicked and Clawed. They did put out another album that was, that was maybe, I don't know if it was demos. It was called like Demonstration. I'll put a picture in the video. But start with Kicked and Clawed, great vocalist, phenomenal guitar player from Japan. Kicked and Clawed is something that needs to be in every hair metal fan's playlist. Okay, the next band. Fuck. Okay, the next band we're gonna talk about is Shotgun Messiah. Now, Shotgun Messiah had at least two phenomenal albums before they made a drastic turn with their sound when they really went industrial. 
but they had a great debut album. Their self-titled debut came out in 1989. Now this album got some traction. I think it was sold over, I think it sold around 400,000 copies. They had a singer on that album called Zinni Zan. Now Zinni Zan was the vocalist, but the leaders of the band were a guy named Harry Cody on guitars and Tim Scold who played bass but then ended up becoming the singer of the band when they released the album that we're going to talk about now, Second Coming. Now, Second Coming came out in October of 1991. Do you know what album came out one month before that? Nirvana's Nevermind. So, they probably didn't stand a chance, but there were some songs on this album that could have blown up. Now, you're probably thinking, man, I know of Shotgun Messiah. Now, obviously, you know, serious hair metal fans know Shotgun Messiah, okay? But even the casual hair metal fan probably has heard a song of theirs called Heartbreak Boulevard, which is constantly played on Hair Nation on Sirius XM. Now, Heartbreak Boulevard is a great song, but there are some others that you need to know about. So let's get into it. You need to know... That Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Obviously, with a title like that, it's going to be awesome. You need to know Nobody's Home. Heartbreak Boulevard. Fantastic song. I love, I'm not a guitar player, so I'm not going to know how to say this. But when he slides his pick up the string and he makes this, oh, just, if you know the song, you know what part I'm talking about. It, it's so cool and so obviously simple. And a lot of bands do that, but the way he did it in that song... Just so original, Heartbreak Boulevard, great song. I want more, I wanna know, and can't fool me. Now, Tim Scold, who who's singing on this album, he, he has kind of a strange and interesting voice. I don't know that it's a good voice, but sometimes I like singers that don't have that, that pretty rock and roll voice. Sometimes singers that are a little rough around the edges. They have that grit to their vocals. And, and, and that's what I think Tim has. And so sometimes I think, oh, well, it shouldn't work on ballads, but it does. And there are some great ballads on this album. First, Living Without You. I think it got released as a single man. Great emotional ballad. Then there's a song called Free that is phenomenal. And then Ride the Storm, which maybe is almost considered more mid-tempo. So, anyway, after Second Coming, they release an EP called I Want More. Then, in, I'm not sure what year, maybe around 94, they release an album called Violent New Breed, which abandons any semblance of hair metal and goes industrial. Very similar to what Tame Me Down and Faster Pussycat ended up doing in later years. So that, that, that stuff hasn't grabbed me, but their debut album and then Second Coming are great. Two different singers, and this is kind of a rare case where a band has two singers on two different albums and they're both phenomenal. Hey, go check out Shotgun Messiah. Check out those first two albums. It's a band that deserves your attention. And the final band in our list of hair metal bands that should have blown up but didn't is Hanoi Rocks. Now, if you can see behind me, and I think you can, you might see part of a poster of Hanoi Rocks um, that, that uh, came out in the late 80s when Guns N' Roses label reissued the early 1980s Hanoi Rocks catalog. Hanoi Rocks was a huge influence on most of the 80s hair metal bands, but particularly, I know that Guns N' Roses and Skid Row really talked about Hanoi a ton. Hanoi Rocks forms in the late 1970s, mainly led by Andy McCoy, who wrote most of the songs, played lead guitar, their vocalist, Michael Monroe, probably the prettiest frontman in rock and roll. So they had the sleazy, you know, Andy McCoy known for his, his history of experimenting with, with, you know, drugs, tons of 
tons of uh, addiction problems in that band, but it just led to a sleazy, drug-fueled, punk-influenced metal sound that worked. So why is Hanoi Rocks famous uh, in hair metal circles? Well, besides the fact that they were a great band, um, they released four albums that were awesome, and then they were in the process of trying to blow up in America with the album that we're going to talk about today, Two Steps from the Move. However, as they were getting ready to tour America and support that album, their drummer, Razzle, attends a party with some of the members of Motley Crue, um, decide they, they, they're out of booze. He and Vince Neil are going to go get some booze, hop into Vince's car, and on that trip, a catastrophic car crash, Razzle ends up dying. Vince Neil does only a month in jail, plays a big, pays a you know a, a fine, and then he's out of jail. A lot of people, uh, myself included, feel like that destroyed all the momentum that Hanoi Rocks had. They did stay together for a few more months, tried to finish a tour, but they never recorded another album together until years later. Um, they split up, and McCoy goes on to do some stuff on his own. It forms a couple bands. Their bass player goes on to form Jet Boy, which is actually a really cool band. Michael Monroe comes back in 1989 with a cool solo album. He has continued to put out tons of albums, you know, right up to this day. But we're going to talk about their 1984 album, Two Steps from the Move. So before talking about the songs that you need to hear from Hanoi Rocks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Michael Monroe does not have a great voice. Now, he's known, for, he's an awesome front man. I like his vocals, but you're not going to say, oh man, that, that voice is really awesome. It just fits in the context of the songs of Hanoi Rocks. Now, in the, Hanoi's earlier catalog, he did a lot of higher singing, but on Two Steps from the Movie, he started experimenting with grittier vocals, and I think it really worked. So, songs you need to know from Two Steps from the Move. High School, I Can't Get It, Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Now, how did that song not blow up? That song should have been the first single of this album. Instead, they released a cover of Credence Clearwater Revival's Up Around the Bend as the first single in video. It's a great song but it shouldn't have been the first single. It should have been Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Then uh, Cutting Corners and maybe even Boiler, though I hesitate to put Boiler on there. Okay, and then there are two ballads, Million Miles Away, which is, I don't know if it's technically a ballad, but I'm gonna count it here. Great song. And then a super uh, famous ballad. This song has been has been covered by so many bands called "Don't Ever Leave Me," and and it's a song that that you know was, was released as a single. Um, it will go down in the history of Hanoi Rocks as one of their I'm sure their their top five most most famous songs, easily their most famous ballad. So, um, two steps from the move. Uh, it's it's. It's all, I almost love this band just more for the influence they had on the scene. They were so far ahead of everybody when it came to the glam look and the glam attitude. I mean, Motley Crue is, is probably generally and rightfully acknowledged as the originators of hair metal. Their first album, Too Fast for Love, came out in 1981. But Hanoi Rocks, who started in Finland, were right with them at the beginning. They just didn't get the attention that Motley Crue got. They deserved it. This, Two Steps from the Move, should have been the album that put them over the top in the in America. Obviously, a tragedy stops that. But hey, go explore the Hanoi Rocks catalog. You won't regret it. Start with Two Steps from the Move. Okay, with that, that ends part two of hair metal bands that could have and should have, but didn't. Here's 10 more albums that I implore you to go check out. 
If you're a hair metal fan, but you don't know these albums, hey, you're going to add at least some bands, I'm sure of, that are going to, you know, be in addition to your other favorite bands of this genre. Hey, do you know these bands? Tell me what bands that you agree with. Tell me what bands you disagree with. Tell me what albums out of my two episodes so far that I have missed out on. Like I said before, I'm sure I could do this sort of episode at least three more times. There are so many great bands of this genre that just got ignored, that never got the attention they deserve. So with that, here's an end to episode 11. Hey, if you like what I'm doing, give this video a like. Tell me where I got it right. Tell me where I got it wrong. And I would seriously appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. I'm going to keep putting out videos at least right around once a week. Hopefully you find something that you get some value with. With that, episode number 11, we're saying we're signing off. Until next week, take care.